time you move around, you have a bending action, you have um, an up and down action, right. side to side, and this movement is what creates a suction that allows nutrients and water to flood the disc okay. and maintain its normal hydration and height. Okay. And hydration is very important because that's what allows that disc to have its strength and its height. And it will act as a spacer between each vertebrae, right. allowing for proper room for the nerve root and for good movement as you bend forward and back and, and walk and do the activities of daily living that you're accustomed to doing. When that disc starts to lose water, it starts to lose its normal height. Okay. If it starts to lose its normal height, it starts to lose the capacity to pump for itself mm -hmm. because now it, it's starting to get degenerate it starts to get brittle, and it starts to be very susceptible to any type of injuries like bulges or herniations or protrusions. Okay. So the disc relies on your movement again to do the pumping action mm -hmm. that creates that suction that draws in fluids and water, nutrients, and all that good stuff so that it can remain viable. This is an example of a normal disc. And you can see that center there is called the nucleus propulsus, and you see each one of those rings, mm -hmm. they're concentric rings that hold this material in the center mm -hmm. nice and tight. If this starts to degenerate, these rings get weak, and this material now can break through those rings, right. creating an overall distortion, and you can compare the two and see that right. it is indeed dis distorted. Right. Okay, now that distortion is called a, a disc bulge. Right. And as that distorts, it can actually put pressure on the cord, the okay. spinal cord itself, okay. and the nerve root that comes out right. from the spinal cord at that level. Uh, that's an actual example there mm -hmm. of this nucleus repulsus breaking through all of the annular rings or annular fibers. And what happens then is a, a, a herniation or a protrusion. This is another example where you can see a cross section there where it actually has broken through all of the rings and now it is classified as a herniation or the protrusion situation. That also is very painful and can put pressure on the cord. It can put pressure on the spinal nerve root as it exits out of the neural foramen here, these holes. So sometimes the bulge or the herniation is large enough so that it's not only on one side, it's on both sides. Mm -hmm. It's broad enough to encompass the entire width of this uh, spinal canal. Okay. And if it is, it tends to give you symptoms down both legs. Right. Right now, you're still experiencing symptoms just down one leg? Yes. Okay, so on your MRI, it shows that too. So we're going to you know, go over it in detail to see what's what with that. This is very painful because the body does not recognize this material. This material is always self-contained mm -hmm. inside of the disc. So when it does exit out of the disc, the body sees it as a foreign substance and starts to attack it very aggressively. And it creates an inflammatory response. Inflammation of the nerve root itself can, can occur. And that starts to send down signals down into the leg that feels like sciatica. Um, indeed, it, it is sciatica because that, that's just a symptom that's right. a result of this bulge situation. Mm -hmm. Now, medications cannot touch this situation. Right. Right. Uh, of course, surgery can alleviate this problem, but only at a, at a significant cost to you right. as far as um, possible disability or impairment later on down the road or even the need to get another surgery. So ideally, if we could deal with this from a non-surgical standpoint, mm -hmm. of course that would be better. If we could do this in a, in a dealing with it without drugs, that would be better too, because drugs obviously have side effects as right. far as the liver and the kidneys and stomach lining and all causing damage to those areas. Sometimes if this is a long-standing issue that the patient has been dealing with for a long period of time, mm -hmm. the body starts to lay down extra calcium deposits along the ridges of the bone in an effort to do its own surgery. And it li it'll literally try to fuse the bones together over a period of time by laying down extra calcium okay. deposits along the ridges. And that is a sign of osteoarthritis, another form of degenerative disc disease. Mm -hmm. So not only can the disc become degenerate, so can the bones. Mm -hmm. And those bone spurs can occlude or go into the spinal canal and also into the nerve 
or neural canal where the nerve root exits at, taking up some of the space in those areas and creating a stenosis or a narrowing effect in those areas. Right. And that also can choke off the nerve or put pressure on the spinal cord, creating the symptoms of muscle spasm, pain, numbness and tingling in those issues. So we're going to go over now, now that we have a good understanding of what happens in this situation, we're going to go over some of the problems on your MRI. Basically at L2, L3, you have a small to moderate size protruding disc herniation in the midline and extending to the left of the midline. This mildly, mildly indents the anterior thecal sac without other spinal stenosis. Now what that basically is saying is that there is a, a small to moderate size protrusion or herniation, and that's what this example is. Right. Uh, and it's more to the midline. So this one here is, is to the left. Yours is actually right in the center. Okay. Okay? And that actually is putting pressure, and it also extends to the left. So it's a more of a broad-based bulge mm -hmm. from the center onto the left. And it's putting pressure or indenting on the anterior fecal sac. There's a sac that encases the spinal cord, and as that bulges out or protrudes out, it's actually putting pressure on that sac. Right. And as you move around, it can actually put pressure on the cord itself to, throughout your day-to-day -day activities. So that's a, a, a pretty significant situation there that you're dealing with. Now, it also says that this mildly indents the, the anterior glycal sac without other spinal stenosis. Stenosis, remember, is a narrowing effect, right. and this canal has been narrowed now because the bulge is, is taking up some of that space right. that the spinal cord needs to exist in. It. Um, it's saying it's not creating other spinal stenosis, and what it's referring to is the neural foramen mm -hmm. right in here. It's not big enough to create pressure on the nerve root as it exits, okay. but it is big enough to create problems with the spinal cord itself. Okay. okay. No abnormality of the intervertebral foramina. And that, again, is the, the holes where the nerve root comes out. Okay. There's the, those seem to be okay. Uh, the L3-4 level is normal. L4-5, you have a moderate-sized midline protruding disc herniation, basically the same thing as the other level. And this indents and flattens the thecal sac with mild spinal stenosis. So... Again, the same situation. This one's a, actually a little bit worse because not only is it indenting the sac, it's also flattening the sac okay. where the cord resides. And that's pretty significant. The AP diameter of the thecal sac at the level of the disc is 11 millimeters. Slight narrowing of the intervertebral, intervertebral foramina is also evident bilaterally. So this protrusion is large enough to create also stenosis on each of the nerve roots that exit out from on both sides of the spinal cord at that level. So that's a pretty significant um, herniation. The disc herniation may abut the left L4 nerve and L5 nerve root. So that's a pretty large one to be able to, to affect both of those, right. those nerve roots. And that is why you're having the symptoms down the leg on that side. Okay. And, and, and it's creating the sciatic symptom. Right. Now, it's not the sciatica that we need to be treating. Right. It's the disc problem. Exactly. Right. And so, yes, the medications may help with um, the symptom, but mm -hmm. until we are able to fix the problem, you're still going to remain in this state, and it's going to get worse. Now, your choices are not very many. You have a um, physical therapy option. That, that's not really going to help because that's for dealing with muscle, strengthening muscle, strengthening core to support the lower back. Um, that, is, that will be necessary later on down the line, but oftentimes orthopedic doctors will try to do something for you and they'll suggest physical therapy, but that's not really the answer. Mm -hmm. Same thing with medication. They just want to do something for you right. to alleviate the pain, but again, that's not really the answer. As far as the meds that, that are available to you, you have the muscle relaxers, the pain pill, pills, you have corticosteroid injections, epidurals, um, mm -hmm. pain patches, and on and on. These things are just temporary fixes for the symptom. 
And then, of course, you have uh, surgery. Now, in this example here of this MRI, I don't suggest surgery at this point. Uh, there may be other doctors that are more aggressive in that regard, or, or, and they would want to do surgery. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm the doctor that says, hey, let's, let's try it as much as possible to do non-invasive procedures right. first. And we do have such a procedure here called the spinal decompression. And what that does is it takes a disc that's compressed, right. dehydrated, degenerate, and this machine will open that disc up and pump for the disc, creating that suction that we need to draw in nutrients, first of all, and also to create the suction that draws in the herniation back into the center of the disc. Okay. Uh, spinal decompression is absolutely amazing. I've, I've seen much worse MRI reports than this. Mm -hmm two to three, four page reports with um, more significant issues and we've been able to help them with the, with the table. It's pretty okay. incredible. I'm gonna bring you over there now and I'll show you exactly what the table looks like and what it does and okay. talk about that option for you as, a, as an option. Do you have any questions about this so far? No, can I get a copy of that? Yes, definitely, okay. definitely. Hi, this is Dr. Thomas. Many of you may be suffering with a herniated or bulging disc. You may have been told you need surgery. You may have already tried muscle relaxers and pain pills, epidurals or injections of all kinds. Uh, you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. You're sick and tired of being in pain. You're sick and tired of the numbness and tingling, the muscle weakness. You're sick and tired of not being able to live your life like you want to. You don't know what else to do. Uh, I have a possible solution for you. It's called spinal decompression. Uh, give us a call and see about coming down to our office for a second opinion. I'd be more than happy to share with you the knowledge I have and how we've been able to help hundreds of patients live pain-free.